everyone a very warm welcome to our channel smiley kids in today's video we're gonna cover the next important topics of mattresses let's begin the topics we're gonna cover are singular matrix non-singular matrix inverse of a matrix Cramer's rule and some properties related to Cramer's rule along with examples Firstly, we have singular matrix. A matrix is said to be singular if its determinant is zero. Now, if I take on this example over here, let's say this is matrix C. All right. This matrix will only be called as singular matrix when its determinant is zero. Now, what is this over here that I have written? Here, this sign, that is, these two bars in which matrix A is kept, those resemble that we are talking about a determinant. All right. Now, if determinant of matrix A is 0, it is said to be a singular matrix. This right over here is a singular matrix. Since its determinant, as we have calculated in earlier videos, it is zero. All right, and that is the, and that is why this is a singular matrix. Let's talk about non-singular matrix. Now that we know what singular matrix is, you might have already assumed what non-singular matrix would be, isn't it? A singular matrix was some matrix where its determinant is zero. Now, non-singular matrix is such a matrix, its determinant will be non-zero. Non-singular, non-zero. Fine. Now here, this example was discussed in our previous videos. All right. In this uh, matrix, the determinant is non-zero. That means it is not zero. And such a matrix is known as a non-singular matrix. Moving forward, we have inverse of a matrix. Let's see what it is. Now, this hefty definition on the screen would make you quite confusing. Here's why I have brought this formula for you. A minus 1, that is inverse of A, will be equal to 1 by A in, you know, in these two lines. What does that mean? It is basically determinant of A into adjoint of A. All right. And that is what is the formula for inverse of a matrix. You can simply tell it's, uh, you know, adjoint of A divided by determinant of A. That will give you the inverse of matrix. For finding out inverse of a matrix, we require two things. One is adjoint and one is determinant. All right. And that is when you'll divide them and find out the inverse. Now, let's quickly take a good example and find out adjoint and determinant and then divide them. Now, not being very complex, I'm going to take out a 2 by 2 matrix. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4. Firstly, let's find out its determinant. What is determinant? Here, do not forget the old concepts here, all right? It will be multiplication of the diagonal elements minus multiplication of non-diagonal elements that will be 4 minus 6 that is minus 2. Now what is the determinant of this matrix? It is minus 2. Now let's find out the adjoint. For finding out adjoint you require two important things minors and cofactors. Isn't it? Let's first find out minors. What do you do that? Let's suppose I need to find minor of 1, 1. Okay. Then I'm going to cut down all the rows and columns it belongs to and I have 4. Then 
m12 will be equal to let's first cut down the rows and columns yes so what is it equal to 3 all right now this is all something we have discussed previously so i'm not stressing more on this all right now let's cut them again m13 is gonna be 2 fine now certainly let's cut down 4 here you'll have wait hold on this is m21 not m13 so this is m21 m22 now what is m22 will be equal to 1 here m resembles minor all right minor of 1 1 all right these are the minus now what about cofactors c11 c12 c21 c22 now these are cofactors let's write down them here m11 will be equal to c11 equal to 4 why because here you have even number as their sum all right then let's move on to the m212 that will be equal to 3 as their sum and that is odd so let's try you know change the sign to minus 3 now again 2 plus 1 over here is 3 again it is odd so let's change the sign to minus 2 here 2 plus 2 is 4 so let's put it as it is now these are the minors and cofactors. Now let's put on the table of cofactors. What do you have? 4 minus 3 minus 2 and 1. Now the transpose of this matrix will give you the adjoint, isn't it? Let's write down the adjoint. The transpose of this matrix is going to be 4 minus 3 minus 2 and 1. Alright, here we have the adjoint. Now, it will be adjoint of A by determinant of A. What was our determinant? It was 2, isn't it? Well, it was minus 2, right? Now, how do you perform its division? Let me tell you over here. 4 by minus 2. You're going to divide each element. That will be what? Minus 2 over here. Then minus 2 by minus 2 will be 1. And then you have minus 3 by minus 2, 3 by 2. And then you have 1 by minus 2 minus 1 by 2. This will be the inverse of this matrix. Inverse of 1, 2, 3, 4 will be minus 2, 1, 3 by 2 and minus 1 by 2. Now here I want to introduce you to one note point that if determinant, let's say your determinant of A is 0, then there exists no inverse for A. Inverse will not be for matrix A. But if determinant is not equal to 0 and is equal to some other number, then inverse exists. Here we had determinant as minus 2 and that is why inverse actually existed. Right? Let it be it's positive or negative. That does not matter. It only matters that if determinant is 0, inverse of matrix does not exist. In that way, you can actually find out if inverse exists for a matrix or not. Now, let us move to an important rule of this chapter, the Cramer's rule. Cramer's rule. In this, you'll find some hefty things on the screen. You need not worry about them. Firstly, let me introduce you to these three equations. Before I even do that, why Cramer's rule? Why are we studying Cramer's rule? Well, Cramer's rule over here is helping us solve unlimited equations. You can find out x, y, z. All right, without actually solving by substitution or elimination method that you have studied in your childhood, right? So, Cramer's rule would be very important rule when you are solving unlimited equations. Fine. And then one more important thing over here is that this rule is also known as the determinant method. Because this rule uses determinant the most 
so we call it as the determinant method let's see what this rule actually says us so here if you look at the systems of equations that you have on the screen you have three equations in that we have a1 x plus b1 y plus c1 z is equal to d1 and so on here if you see there are three variables x y and z so we are going to find out these three variables using the Cramer's rule now what are we doing in this Cramer's rule let us understand that first firstly we are going to find out the determinant of all the constant terms that are there c1 c2 c3 b1 b2 b3 a1 a2 a3 are all the constant terms that you find you're going to take the determinant of them and remember that they are always in series that is 1 1 1 2 2 2 3 3 3 in a vertical manner all right so determinant of a1 a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 is what you're going to take first this is the first step now secondly you're going to take determinant of here you're taking d1 so always remember you're going to replace the first column you're going to replace the first column with d1 d2 d3 all right the rest of the terms are as it is since it is 1, you're going to change the first column into D1, D2, D3. Fine. Now, the third step will be, here you have 2. So, you'll replace the second column with D1, D2, D3. Then, you'll take the determinant of this matrix. That is, you're going to take, you're going to consider third column and delete all the terms that it has and put on D1, D2, D3 into it. Now here basically we are going to find out determinants of four matrices. Alright. Now that we found out the determinants of four matrices, let's see what to do next. Once you're done with finding all the determinants, right? Here you will have the formula. This is the Kramer's rule. By this, you can find out x, y, z at any time. Fine. Now, by using this formula, let's implement an example into it. Examples of Kramer's rule. And then we are going to see consistency and inconsistency of Kramer's rule. Now here I have a set of equations. Now using Kramer's rule, I'll try to find out x, y and z for these three equations. All right. Now, firstly, I'll find out determinant of a1, a2. Oh, well, wait, a1, b1, c1, isn't it? So a1, b1, c1, a2, b2, c2 a3 b3 c3 so firstly let me find out the determinant of this now tell me what a1 b1 c1 are 3 4 5 2 minus 1 8 5 minus 2 7 so here we have the matrix and here we are going to find out the determinant of this matrix Alright, do you all remember how to find determinant? Firstly, if you're going to find out for 3, cut down all the rows and columns it belongs to. And here we'll be having minus 1 into 7 minus minus 2 into 8. Now calculate this first. What is it? Minus 7 plus 16. Isn't it? What is this going to be equal to? 9. Now this 9 should be multiplied with 3. You'll have 27. Fine. Let's input our first number over here. That is 27. Now let's take the second element. That is 2. Let's first erase this. Now let's cut down the rows and columns 2 belongs to. 
Now here we have a two by two matrix again. Four into seven minus of minus two into five. What does this equal to? Twenty-eight plus twenty. Sorry, twenty-eight plus ten. So this is equal to thirty-eight. Now thirty-eight should be multiplied with two, isn't it? Here you'll be having seventy-six. So here let's input seventy-six. Now let's take the third element. That is five. Let's delete them first. All right. Now let's multiply them. Four into eight minus of minus one into five. What is this equal to? Thirty-two plus five. That is thirty-seven. Now thirty-seven over here should be multiplied with five. All right. Now what is thirty-seven times five? Here we have thirty-five, fifteen, eighteen. So here. we are having 185 so these are the three numbers that we have now let's perform the table work all right do you all remember the signs we had plus minus plus isn't it plus minus plus all right that is going to be equal to 27 minus 76 plus 185 Now this is equal to 136. All right. Now 136 is not equal to zero, isn't it? So we can solve these three equations using Cramer's rule. That is the condition. If determinant is zero, then you cannot solve these equations. All right. Now let's solve them. Now you're going to find out determinant one, where you're going to eliminate the values of A one, B one, and C one, and instead you're going to write down D one, D two, D three values in the first column since you're finding out determinant one. Now let's not go into detailed calculation. Let me write down D one as four hundred eight. All right, determinant of this matrix is four hundred eight. Moving forward, let's find out D two wherein. Your second column gets eliminated. Instead of that, you are going to have D1, D2, D3. Yet again, let's not go into detail. Here, the determinant of this matrix is going to be 136. Now, here, let's find out D3, wherein your third column gets eliminated, and instead of that, you are going to have D1, D2, D3 over here. Now let's find out the determinant of this matrix. Here, the determinant is going to be 136. Well, over here we have the formula. Now we know that D is 136, D1 is 408, D2 is 136. And D three is one thirty six. Now let's find out x, y, and z for each. Now x by D one is equal to one by D, isn't it? Now let's substitute the value. D one is four hundred eight, and D is one thirty six. Now one thirty six x is equal to four hundred eight. X is equal to 408 upon 136. That is equal to 3. Here, the value of x turns out to be 3. Now, y by d2 is equal to 1 by d. So, y by d2 is equal to 1 by d. Let me substitute the values here. I'm going to have y by 136 is equal to 1 by 136. So, here y will be equal to 1 because 136 upon 136 will be 1. So y is equal to one. Now let's find out z. Z by d three is equal to one by d. Now that is going to be z by one thirty six is equal to one by one thirty six. Again, here z is equal to one because one thirty six upon one thirty six is one. Now what are the values of x, y, z that we have found through the determinant method or Cramer's rule? Well, x is equal to three. Y is equal to one, and Z is equal to one. 
in this manner you find out the values of variables using farmer's rule here are the properties of farmer's rule where if d is not equal to 0 then there will be an unique solution as we have seen in the previous example d was not equal to 0 so we had a unique solution if d is equal to 0 if discriminant is equal to 0 there are two cases that is if d1 d2 d3 are all equal to 0 then there will be infinite solutions but if any one of the d1 d2 d3 is not equal to 0 then there will be no solution well that's the end of today's video make sure you hit the like button share and subscribe thank you